So the next talk is by David Lazarun from Bria, from Israel. He came just a few hours ago, so I appreciate that you made the long journey, and the floor is yours. Hi. So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm David, um, and I'm the co-founder and CEO at Bria. Um, my professional background is in the fields of cybersecurity, privacy, and uh, data infrastructures. Uh, however, in the last several years, I, I've been lucky to leverage this knowledge uh, at Bria to accelerate healthcare research. Today, we're going to talk about this unusual link of empowering healthcare research with blockchain and how it may solve the challenge of data retrieval and why it is actually a, a pretty natural fit. The next big thing in healthcare research is data. Um, and although it may sound trivial, uh, the proliferation of research relies on it. Live and secure data sets are, have been proven to accelerate uh, time to medicine, uh, development of uh, new treatments, um, providing of uh, uh, required treatment for patients with various diseases. However, data is disconnected, spread among different systems and variety of structures. Uh, all current solutions are either degrade data quality or fail to adhere compliance and regulations. Either not fast enough or not secure enough, in general, not enough. This results in years that added to the time of any development of any drug or cure, uh, years that patients are left without proper treatment. This means that some research doesn't happen at all because of resource shortage or in compliance of solutions. However, instead of trying to structure and combine all this data centrally, we may try to embrace the decentralized nature of healthcare data. And then maybe the challenge will not be so big. Centralized and decentralized um, architectures have been around for decades already. And even for some reason, some really nearly religious attitudes towards them. Um, with changing fashions, it could be mainframe versus uh, data centers back then, and then uh, on-premises versus cloud, or uh, SaaS versus uh, blockchain. Uh, the fashion's changing. However, both ways of thinking are very reasonable, with advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and that depends on the relevant use case. Centralized system provide efficiency and speed. With a central core that takes care of uh, computation, storage, and maintenance, while the lightweight peers only need to deal with the analysis. This is great, but this structure is unnatural for healthcare data that for years and years and decades have been stored, scattered among, across many different databases, data stores, a variety of structures and forms. Therefore, it can be extremely difficult to obtain all this data to a central database. And this, even not taking into consideration uh, 
the, the, the regulations, uh, the privacy laws, etc., that makes it even harder. By the way, the last thing is a good thing. Healthcare data is one of the most sensitive types of data we can think of, and it may be horrific to think about uh, consequences of a, a leakage uh, in such a central database. On the other hand, there are the decentralized systems. Their advantages is in being scalable and in keeping the control of the data in the sources, but even more important, that you don't need to take the data anywhere. You don't need to move it anywhere from their sources, and that is what's so aligned with how healthcare data works. So it's possible to build a decentralized application for healthcare data exchange without the need to unify it through a centralized authority. And then only anonymized compliant uh, data will be shared on demand when the only point of access is the query. Now, blockchain is a specific implementation of the decentralized paradigm uh, with one of the unique advantages is with the smart contracts mentioned today previously that allows enforcing rules and guidance uh, on the cryptographic level. So blockchain in general can provide scalability, privacy, autonomy and assurance. In Bria, we implement these features as part of our solutions. Now, Bria is in some ways uh, similar to, to Medblock uh, mentioned uh, before. Actually, we are even a bit less uh, of a blockchain system and more of a data transformation and structuring system. Uh, so this is about where the, the main difference is. H however, Bria is a data partnership network designed to accelerate medical innovation. Bria making the process of obtaining and sharing healthcare data simple and seamless transaction. The outcome is a whole new level of data quality. Uh, we call it in Bria the holy grail of data. It's longitudinal, linked, and live. Our vision is to enable 10 times more researchers, each taking 10 times less time, and each being 10 times cheaper. But two, two things are important here. One is the quality of data, and two is the compliance. Let's start with the quality side. On the quality side, Bria's unique approach is that we do not prepare the data in advance. We do not structure data set in advance. Uh, we structure and prepare all the data in real time only when there is already a query in place. Uh, we are doing it with our adapters that we put in advance. They're doing this translation in real time. This approach provides a 10 times faster time to data, time to integration, 10 times faster than any other solution uh, currently you can find. Uh, it provides more precise answers because the answer is always in the context of a specific question without some assumptions that may be done if you prepare the data in advance. And the data is always up to date uh, it, because it's live. In addition, uh, we have a unique uh, flawless patient matching uh, technology that uh, enables us to match patient records across different sources and provide complete patient journeys without duplication. Uh, and we're doing it also 
thanks to a, an algorithm enabled by blockchain called uh, Zero Knowledge Proof. Um, it leveraged to create a deterministic uh, matching of records. Eventually, all the data is harmonized in a uh, fire as well and uh, provided in a unified manner from all the sources to the researcher or to the developer. On the compliance side, we ensure the data retrieval is 100% safe and compliant. We perform bulletproof multi-layered de-identification and uh, we are the only solution that have an active approach that actively prevents any malicious attempt to re-identify the person, to re-identify the identity. Uh, so if a malicious attempt will happen on the network and whoever will try to run a, a, a pattern of queries that seems like he's able to uh, re-identify a person, uh, this user will be immediately blocked on the network and then it, to, to re-enable re the user, uh, there will be need in the proof of stake. Uh, on top of that, we leverage smart contract to enforce all the policies. It starts with the regulations like GDPR or HIPAA. Uh, it also may uh, be used to enforce uh, patient consent. It's used to enforce specific data use agreement for specific researchers. Uh, so that's a whole use of the blockchain smart contract. Uh, last thing, the, the whole decentralized um, architecture validates the data will never go through a third party. Uh, and it includes ourselves. There are no such thing as Bria Cloud or Bria servers, uh, and no data flows through us. Actually, Bria as a co company uh, doesn't have any access to data at all. Everything uh, is uh, decentralized. All in all, we do the heavy lifting of data preparation and exchange infrastructure in order for researchers to be able to focus on their next medical breakthrough. The flow of uh, the system is as following. Researcher uh, runs a query or an uh, AI model. This uh, query distributes uh, to all the relevant sources, hospitals, etc., uh, executed in each of them separately. And then relevant data is carved and retrieved directly from the sources, structured, structured to fire, uh, de-identified, and then transmitted directly to the, uh, to the researcher where all the data is unified uh, from all, all the sources. Here is a visualization that shows the process. The standardization of data in the beginning, then matching of tokens with other hospitals, then anonymization, removing of all the uh, identifiers, and finally, the smart contract that's removing uh, from the data all the components that may be out of policy. Here is just another visualization with several hospitals uh, all in once. Uh, in the end, it's one query that initiates the whole process. So it all comes to the idea uh, of letting, uh, letting the idea of centralization and, uh, and actually understanding that in, in case of healthcare data, maybe make it even more decentralized, but linked by blockchain may be the answer. Uh, here I can give a couple of examples. Uh, for example, there is an actual uh, machine learning uh, breast cancer uh, study, clinical study, uh, that following uh, several thousand of patients uh, across about 20 hospitals. Uh, so each of uh, the patients 
may have records in more than one hospital. Uh, some of the patients already developed the disease. Some are just carriers of the BRCA gene. Some may develop uh, the disease during uh, the clinical trial period. So in order to be able to accomplish this research, you need match data and match and link data across all these sources, retrospective and prospective, and the identified. And uh, therefore, a solution like BRIA is an obvious solution. Um, another potential ex example is uh, Epidemic, uh, pandemic tracking. Um, maybe you can imagine a pandemic. Um, recently, uh, all, all countries tried to track, uh, develop some uh, apps to track, uh, to track a uh, patient, to track the disease. Uh, if it would be possible to validate uh, the results from all the different HMOs, hospitals, clinics, without even exposing patient identity, but, uh, but able, uh, and, with, and for sure without uh, uh, centralizing all this data in one database, it, co it could be great. And this is exactly the power of BRIA. That's all. Thank you so much. Um, I'm open for questions, but by the way, you are if you're interested to continue the conversation, distract, discuss the subject, you're also welcome to write me my e email, david at bria.com. Yeah, thanks a lot, David. Are there questions from the audience? Yeah, thank you very much. I have a question to your uh, data input where you say like we have a, a, a basically um, a gate or, or something that you extract the data that, that you don't ask for standardization on the, on the customer side, so to say, or the node side. Um, and so are you do, for which kind of data spaces in the medical area have you done that already? Because that data space is enormously enlarging, that's one thing, not only within each data space, but even the data spaces. And within these, even the, the, the societies that are responsible for these data, let's say uh, imaging, uh, radiologists, et cetera, et cetera, are not even agreeing on any kind of standards and quality cr criteria. So you as a startup, how can you actually manage that huge task that you Say I, I I make the I make the rules now how which will, which one should go in there. For me, that looks like a an enormous task. So the, the reason I didn't elaborate on this before because this is exactly the non-blockchain part of the system. However, um, so here we also leveraged uh, Fire first of all. Uh, it's the first time uh, Fire was introduced four years ago. And it was the first time that there were, was some standard for healthcare data. Um, and not only that it is a standard and in the fields where it's introduced, it, uh, it may work, it's also a community standard. So it's relatively easy to extend it. Uh, for example, uh, we, we went, went into the oncological space and we found out that the, there are no uh, relevant uh, fire uh, formats. So we developed based on fire be uh, best practices, our own format, and currently we're suggesting it back to the uh, community. And that's uh, the advantage of such approach. So that's the reason, like, like Mediblock, we also went with fire. Uh, one thing that it uh, uh, helped with before the standardization was a many-to-many -many problem. You needed to translate from many formats to many formats, and that's nearly infinite uh, challenge. Uh, we, th thanks to this approach with Fire, we able to turn this challenge to many-to-one. It's still a big challenge, but it's a feasible challenge. And, uh, and we do not require from the hospitals to be Fire ready. Uh, most of BRIA is actually an uh, 
a transformation system, a system of adapters that tr translates a different type of data to fire. And we, we developed a lot of optimizations on this. So uh, today we support uh, already uh, most of the clinical data. Uh, we uh, uh, support a lot of uh, imaging data, uh, pathological data, uh, oncological data. Uh, so we, we are already pretty wide. Okay, uh, Thomas. And Please try to be. You convincingly demonstrated that decentralization probably will help in many situations. However, there are situations where many are, f uh, are faced with in this community where I, I think it can be of no help, and that is my question. And it, it expands. My question expands on the topic which Joachim already brought up. My example is rare diseases. We are talking about genetics, <coughs> and rare diseases is an important topic there. <coughs> and the question is, the problem is, what is, what is a rare disease? And how to communicate that? OK, it needs a control, at least a controlled vocabulary. There is none. Better would be to have a terminology. And even better would be to have a full-blown nosology. There are some around. And unless you don't have that, I can't see how decentralization can help with communication. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the example is the European community now is pushing quite concretely to use offer codes for rare diseases, at least in the clinical context. Not in the ambulatory context, because there is, is, uh, is a lot, lot of reluctance against that. But anyway, the, the ministry pushes it, and the law has been changed, and it is, it is written down in the paragraph of Thomas, the Sozialgesetz. You, you also Fünf. have to give him the chance to answer your question. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that is on the way. However, there is no way, or at least I can't see a way, to map say, the, the, the often used OMIM codification to the Orphanet codification. And if it comes to rare diseases, what would be your answer to that problem? So, first of all, I, I, I'm not religious about uh, blockchain. Uh, m maybe it's not the solution here, but, uh, but, I'm not, but I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Uh, because, first of all, because it's... Uh, it's a rare disease. Uh, the the need in the real world evidence is is higher as as I see it as, uh, at least. Uh, the need in data is higher, and uh, trying to consolidate uh, data from so many sources. Uh, actually, I think that maybe in uh, rare disease, actually, it's even even more needed because taking data from I don't know hundreds of hospital, it's uh, it's harder. In preparing everything in advance, it will take tremendous amount of time, while if you just install a connector uh, in every hospital and then run a query and then even the discovery uh, of uh, the relevant data will already happen in a decentralized manner, later you can even, after you discover that, you can maybe centralize it. But uh, at least for the discovery, it, it, may, be, uh, it, may, it may be great. Um, that's uh, how I see it. But I, I would like to discuss it furtherly. At the end, do you agree? At the end, it needs some top-down regulation. Uh, by the way, we, we are completely aligned with top-down regulations. Uh, of even our uh, blockchain is, is a quorum, by the way. So it's a private, uh, it's a private uh, Ethereum network. So, uh, so it's not, we don't really leverage uh, the publicity of a uh, blockchain. We mainly use blockchain just to manage the system in a decentralized way, where each hospital can uh, control its own data, and to enforce top-down regulations like GDPR and others. Uh, so actually, we are very aligned with regulations. Uh, we are, in blockchain terms, we're much more of a DAO uh, than an underground uh, blockchain. OK, thanks a lot. Uh, 
quick question, short answer. You mentioned that you are aiming to reduce the costs by a factor of 10. What would you be able to do with uh, lower costs that you are not able to do right now? So uh, the, one of the main things that we see, at least for now, that's reducing the cost dramatically, it's the shorter time to, to data. Uh, the fact that it takes us about a couple of weeks to integrate with the hospital instead of uh, preparation of data that usually take months to years. Uh, that reduces dramatically the cost both for the hospitals, for the research institutes, and all of them. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, David will also be um, a member of the panel discussion later on. So um, post the questions that couldn't be answered in the online portal, and we will uh, get back to them later on. Thanks again. Thank you so much.